Hey everyone, welcome to my list of the top five IDE productivity hacks to help you save time when you're programming. I'll be demoing these features in Python using PyCharm, but it doesn't matter if you're using VS Code or C++, all the most popular editors have features like these. Let's just dive into it with number five. This one is very useful when you're working in a code base that uses inheritance. I'm talking about the ability to show me the type hierarchy. So if I hit Control H in PyCharm, this will bring up the hierarchy menu. Of course, I can see the parents of the class, but more useful, we can see their parents and their parents and their parents and so on, all the way up to object. Additionally, right now, my JSON formatter doesn't have any child classes, but if I define one real quick, then I can also get a quick glance of what all the child classes are. If I'm looking for inspiration on how to override a particular method from a parent, I can click on the parent and reroute the type hierarchy from there. Now I can see all the sibling classes, at least the ones that my IDE knows about, that I can use for inspiration. Hack number four, code folding, and in particular, being able to automatically fold documentation. So here I am trying to read the source code of the logging formatter class. Now, this is a standard library class, so it's extremely well documented. But I'm not so much interested in the documentation and examples at this point. I really just want to look at the implementation. I want to look at the code. And that's kind of hard to do when 50% of my screen is taken up by documentation. So here's what we can do. Right click, go to folding, and then go to collapse doc comments. This basically hides from view all of the doc strings in the file so that when I'm scrolling through, I no longer see tons and tons of documentation. You can also fold away other parts of the code if they're just not what you want to look at right now. So if I didn't want to see this styles mapping, I just use the keyboard shortcut, control minus, and it's gone. Your IDE understands the syntax of the language, so you can do things like fold away inside an if block, or you can fold away an entire function, or even an entire class. If something is getting in your way and becoming a distraction, making it harder to read the code that you actually want to read, then just fold it away. And that brings us to hack number three, automatically introducing variables, constants, parameters, and functions. Let's say I'm working on this function, I'm working on this function, I'm working on this function, and I take a step back and I realize, hey, there's a little bit of repetition here. I'm using this value data of start plus count minus one in three separate places. Maybe I should make that into a variable. Instead of tediously cutting that out and then creating a new value for that variable, and then replacing that value, and then finding all the places where I use that and replacing that and so on and so forth, instead I can do it all at once. Highlight the expression that you want to replace, and then in PyCharm it's Control alt v you could choose to replace this occurrence only, but PyCharm has noticed that I've actually used the expression three separate times, so I'm going to choose to replace all three occurrences. It automatically pulls out all the usages, and I just have to choose a name for the new value. Or maybe I didn't want to replace that entire expression. Maybe I just wanted to replace this inner part that's repeated, start plus count minus one. Well, that's the end. So I can even highlight a sub-expression and do the same thing, replace all three occurrences, call that variable end. I'd say this shortcut typically saves me about 30 seconds of copy pasting each time I use it. Instead of introducing a variable, slight variations of this include introducing a parameter, where I can now let my caller provide that value, or you can introduce a constant like the speed of light. What this does is essentially the same thing, but it puts it up at the top of the file. Then the ultimate version of this feature is pulling out entire functions. This is extremely useful for breaking down code into more readable components and just making it more readable in general. Here, the process events function does a for loop where it does the same thing for each event. Let's take that block of code and give it a nice name. Control Alt M to extract a method, or in this case, a function. Give it a good name like process event singular. It automatically picks up on what values it needs from the caller in the form of parameters and any output variables. Hit OK, and it creates the function automatically. Now here we have an if condition that's doing some calculation in line. How about instead we give that calculation a name? By extracting functions this way, we can very quickly break down a complicated function into much simpler pieces. 
Moving on, let's open this testing starter project that I made a while ago in order to demonstrate my top two productivity hacks. I want to use this project as an example because it's not just a single file, it's an entire project. So let's get on with it. What's my number two feature? Renaming things. It's such a simple yet common task. When you first write some code, you often don't know what the best name for a variable class or function is. Looking back, you might have a better name, but do you really want to put in all the effort to change it in all the places that it's been used? Let your IDE do it for you. Oh, this dictionary wasn't meant to be part of the public API. It's an implementation detail. I want to put an underscore in front. Shift F6, underscore, done. Shift F6, underscore, done. When I scroll down, I can see that PyCharm changed all the usages of those variables. I don't need to worry about doing a very error-prone find and replace. My IDE understands the language, so it only changes things in the right place. And it's not even limited to a single file. This enum was meant to represent the state of the like button on YouTube. It's either empty, or you've clicked like or dislike. So instead of like state, let's make it a YouTube like state. Of course, it changes the class name, it changes all the usages in the file, including type annotations and return annotations. But if we look over here, it also changed other files. I had written tests for this package, and if we go to our tests, then we see that the tests have also been updated. It even updated all of my import statements to use the new name. That just saved me a lot of time. What might have taken me 30 minutes to go through every file and meticulously update the class name, I can now do multiple times in a minute. So at this point, you've got to be wondering, what could save me more time than that? How about closing my IDE and getting some sleep? Productivity hack number one, automatic moving. As you write more and more code, files tend to get bigger and bigger and bigger. At some point, you might like to break things up in order to stay organized. Or you might want to move something from one file to another now that you have a better idea of where it should live. But sadly, this often just doesn't happen because of the sheer amount of work that it takes to move something around. I've got to create a new file, copy over all the relevant imports and update them to match the new location, copy the definition, then find all the usages across all files in the project, and it's done. It created the new file, determined everything that needed to be imported, copied the definition over, then in the old file and all the other files, including tests, it updated the import to use the new location. If this project had hundreds of files, this just turned what could have been an all-day task into something that was done instantly. If you've ever felt paralyzed starting a larger project because you feel like you need to decide on the perfect project structure and organization before you get started in order to avoid massive tech debt down the line, let this show you you don't need to worry about it. Just start building. The tools can help you get organized later. Bonus runner-ups and giveaway time. If you'd like a chance to win a professional license to PyCharm, the IDE I'm using, or any other JetBrains IDE, make a comment including hashtag mcoding below. For the runner-ups, it's not that they're any less useful, it's just that you probably already know most of them, so it wouldn't make that good of a video. Don't know what something is and want to read about it? Control B. Go to definition. It shows you where this thing is defined. Want to find examples of how this thing is used? Alt F7. Find usages. There's a list of every place in the project that you've used that thing. In the middle of calling a function and can't remember what all the parameters are, Control P to show parameter info. Is your code harder to read because of inconsistent formatting? Control Alt L to automatically format it. And are your imports a mess or do they include things that are not actually used in your code? Control Alt O to organize and optimize them. And that's all. Thank you for watching. And thank you to my patrons and donors for supporting the channel. If you like these videos and you want to support the channel, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. My name's James Murphy, and my company does software consulting. Check us out at mcoding.io. See you in the next one.